What's up in the legal tech world? Find out in the Lex Factor briefs. Quick hits on the latest happenings in the industry and discussion from your Lex Factor hosts around their potential impacts on business. Feed your brain and empower your firm at the same time. All right, everybody, welcome to the Lex Factor briefs. New to the Lex Factor, it's about what's up in the legal tech world. So quick hits on the latest happenings in the industry and discussion from your favorite Lex Factor hosts, Lauren and Brad, who's not here today. So it's Lauren and Randy. Hello. (laughs) It's just Randy, Randy, Randy lately. I know. That's too much even for me. It's too much Randy. It's too much Randy for myself. (laughs) No, but we're here today with one of our our Lex Factor Briefs episodes. So wanted to talk some new news that we've discovered throughout the week. So I was reading an article from Legal Tech News about Winston and Strawn and how they eliminated some of their staff position, opening a support services center. And I thought that was really interesting because we've talked a lot about research in the past and things that we've been reading in an ongoing basis. And what we know is that over 80% of firms actually believe that the fewer support staff is a permanent change. So just to read about this in the news this week actually supports that. But I think it's interesting because obviously we're in a time COVID right now. A lot of people are unfortunately losing their jobs, but the legal industry is starting to see that upturn in business. And so it's definitely an interesting time to change your dynamics so, so greatly. Exactly right. And and in referencing the article, Winston Strawn is actually opening what they're what they're calling is a professional support services center of some type. So unfortunately, they've eliminated some positions, but what they're doing is they're creating a new center uh, that's in response to a fundamental shift, of, of course, across the legal industry mm-hmm. and how and clients, other industries. Exactly. And how clients and lawyers interact. I'm sure Winston and Strawn isn't the first to do this, but this is definitely a trend that I'm sure is going to continue, Yeah, not just within law, but across a number of industries. Yeah, all industries. The interesting part that I see is that they still invested in that support services center for, you know, lack of better words. So you're still employing a staff and you're still housing them somewhere. It's not just cutting staff or outsourcing staff. So I did think that investment was interesting. But I think a lot of firms, you know, regardless of your size, but especially those smaller to mid-sized firms, there is an opportunity just to outsource. And I think what people don't necessarily realize, yes, it's unfortunate that people are losing your jobs. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you're outsourcing these functions that you still need on a day-to-day basis, and you're probably saving money. You know, you think, hey, I'm using an outside vendor. It may be more expensive. I'm probably going to be paying a lot for the placement, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, you're saving on benefits. You're saving on all that other employee support that, you know, think holiday gifts, Mm -hmm. think PTO, things like that. So there's a, there's a plus side to it at the end of the day as well. Right. And, and law firms, as we've said numerous times in a number of our regular podcast episodes, law firms are businesses. The legal industry in general is moving into this new phase of what's called new law. And so new law is providing opportunities for law firms to manage costs, maximize profits, and improve client satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And so not only is it, you know, the end result, of course, is better service to the client, but this is also an opportunity for law firms to get better themselves internally, identifying what they're able to do to the best of their abilities, but then also looking to see what they can outsource to other, um, I'm going to say experts, but into, you know, whether it's individuals or agencies or organizations that can provide a service uh, at a better cost. Yeah. I think we've all seen a lot in the news recently about the ALSP is a um, alternative legal service providers. And it ties in with past conversations that we've had over the past couple of weeks. Um, but it ties in too with last week's episode where we talked about 
people who aren't lawyers or don't have that background being able to acquire firms and move into that industry. So you're dealing with people who have more of a, a business sense and that business background and can make some big moves, but you're also dealing with people who don't necessarily have that that legal insight, so they're not doing what's best for your firm. And with that trend of the ALSPs, they're kind of a mix of both. They have that business and technology background. They're experts there, but they've also educated and positioned themselves as legal industry experts. So right. not only you're probably saving some money, like I said, on headcount because you're not having to pay benefits, you're not having to deal with PTO, scheduling, holiday gifts, things like that, it's just the ins and outs, but you're also gaining people who are truly experts across the board. Right, exactly. And so... And again, it comes down, law firms are being pressured uh, when it comes to margins. You know, their margins are becoming squeezed. They need to find out a way to make as much money as possible. Let's just be blunt. Same, me too. Right, exactly. And so, again... That's why I do this podcast. Exactly. And so, in this burgeoning age of new law, law firms can't afford to be vertical organizations anymore. They can't do everything because they're not experts in everything. They're experts in the law or they're trained in law, but maybe they're not trained in revenue optimization or any other parts with recruiting or audio production, podcast production. (laughs) Exactly. You You know, if they remain within a business model that they're a vertical organization, they're running a risk at going out of business themselves, whether it, if it's not now, it's somewhere not too far down the road. Yeah. You know, they need to make some internal decision making and come to a conclusion as to what they can provide, what they're good at, and then figure out a way that they can outsource some of those uh, yeah. services so that they can provide the best service to their clients. You're not in this boat alone. You know, there are huge firms that are going through the same situation, whether it's you maybe don't have the revenue coming in right now, so you do have to let go of some staff, or just the fact that regardless of COVID, the workforce is changing. More people have been working from home even before we hit the pandemic. Things are just different now. So you're not in this alone. Everybody's feeling it. Everybody's dealing with it. But I think at the end of the day, the point here is know that there's options out there, whether it's something you do on your own, like you build this outsource support center, or there's vendors, there's partners out there that can help you. Those ALSPs, they're experts, not only in business and technology and and all those core areas, but they're experts in the legal industry too. Right. Exactly. And there's a good chance you're going to save some money utilizing somebody like them because they are experts. They know what they're doing. It cuts down on the time and the questioning and the confusion and you get what you need and you get it quickly. Right. Exactly. And at the tail end of this article that Lauren referenced, you know, legal industry experts or consultants are saying that firms are not only need to be looking, they need to look very hard and continuously at streamlining their operations because some firms have already been doing it. And be, the pandemic has created an opportunity for law firms to take swifter action in doing so. Yeah. I, I don't think it's going to stop. And no. it's not just law firms. It's any business right yeah, now. Yeah, it's anybody, and it's going right. to be around for a while. So. All right. Well, that's today's Lex Factor Brief. If you guys have any questions, future topics that you want to hear more about, you know where to find us, lexconservices.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, wherever. Email Randy and I, hunt us down, find us. Um, Otherwise, thanks for listening today, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in to the Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.